Musters up last remaining strength. Bolt me out. <laughs> Had a bath and went out to dinner. Oh, oh, what's the cable? What's his name? Blazer? No, 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 no. The other gentleman. Oh, Cranko Samba. Never recovered. Bowled on on my account. Bowled off on his own, sir. Died, sir. Bless my soul. What an extraordinary thing. Oh. Uh, they are, sir, all over. We thrown in the sponge. Twas Dumpkins and Potter done it. Uh, uh, excuse me, excuse me. Hello, Staple, how are you? Oh, well, well, very well. I hear you've got some friends down from London. I wonder if you'd care to join us. We are to partake of a plain dinner at the Blue Lion at Muddleton a little later of on. Of course, that's very kind. Uh, uh, among our friends, we include Mr. Uh, 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 Jingle. Uh, Alfred Jingle. Of no hall, nowhere. Uh, <laughs> I should be very happy, I'm sure. Oh, and I. So shall mm. I, thank you. Oh, capital, capital. Well, no hurry. We're all walking in. Make your own way. That's right, I'll whip them in. Blue Lion. Peeped in this morning. Capital dinner, fowl and pies. Pleasant fellows, these. Very. Gentlemen, 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 I give you Mr. Luffy. Oh, he's not the boy he was. Gentlemen, if I were not Luffy, I would be Dumpkins. And if I were not Dumpkins, I would be Potter. <laughs> gentlemen, fill your glasses. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, I give you Dumpkins and Potter. Yeah. And Dumpkins for um, determination. <laughs> and Potter, Potter for property. <laughs> Bat in blisters. Mm, yeah. Ball scorched brown. Mm. 570 runs. Oh, yeah. Rather exhausted. Cranko yeah. musters up last remaining strength. Yeah. Bowls me out. Yeah. Ha. Had a bath and went out to dinner. Oh. <laughs> Gentlemen, yeah. may I give you a full word to yeah. express yeah. my admiration for yeah. our yeah. eminent guest from London, <laughs> Mr. Pickwock. Mr. Snodgrass took a mass of notes, which would no doubt have afforded most useful and valuable information had not the burning eloquence of the words or the feverish influence of the wine made that gentleman's hand so extremely unsteady as to render his writing near unintelligible and his style wholly so. We fancy that we can discern at the end of the notes some indistinct reference to broiled bones. And then the words, cold and without, occur. <laughs> but any hypothesis we could found upon them must necessarily rest upon mere conjecture. We are not disposed to indulge in any of the speculations to which they may give rise. It was evening at Dingley Dell. Isabella and Emily had strolled out for a breath of air. The deaf old lady had fallen asleep in her chair. The snoring of the fat boy penetrated in low and monotonous sound from the distant kitchen. And there sat Mr. Tupman and the spinster aunt, uncared for by all, caring for none, and dreaming only of themselves. There they sat. In short, like a pair of carefully folded kid gloves, bound up in each other. Oh, oh, oh my goodness, I, I have forgotten to water my flowers. W water them now. I will accompany you. It will take cold in the evening air. Oh, no, 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 it's a beautiful evening. A stroll will do me good. Oh, very well, if you are quite sure. Quite sure. Now, where is my watering pot? I declare that boy Joe cannot be anything. Miss Rachel. Why, Mr. Tupman? Miss Rachel, you are an angel. Mr. Tupman? Nape, I know it but too well. 
All women are angels, they say. Ah, then what can you be? Or to what without presumption can I compare you? Where was the woman ever seen who resembled you? Where else could I hope to find so rare a combination of excellence and beauty? Where else could I seek to... Oh, Miss Rachel. Oh, men are such deceivers. They are, they are. But, but not all men. There lives at least one who can never change. One who would be content to devote his whole existence to your happiness. Who lives but in your eyes. Who bears the heavy burden of life itself only for you. Could such an individual be found? But he can be found. He is found. He is here, Miss Rachel. Oh, Mr. Tupman. Mr. Tupman, rise, I beg you. I Never. Oh, Rachel, I shall stay here upon my knees until you say you love me. Oh, Mr. Tupman, I can hardly speak the words, but you are not indifferent to me. Indifferent? Oh, dear, dear lady. Oh, Mr. Tupman, I... Oh, 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 Mr. Tupman, we are observed. We are discussed. Who? Who? Where? Over there, the boy Joe. Mm. What, 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 what do you want here, sir? Supper's ready, sir. Uh, have you just come here, sir? Just. Uh, you're, you're sure of that, eh? Yes. Eh? It's all right. He knows nothing of what's happened. Oh. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> supper, eh? <laughs> uh, thank you, Joe. <laughs> yes, uh, well, we had better go along in. <laughs> you are sure he knows nothing? Absolutely. <laughs> Did you speak, sir? Did you speak, sir? Oh, oh silly boy. He has fallen asleep again. So he has. Come along, Miss Rachel. Come along. <laughs> Wherever can the gentleman be? Oh, I do hope they have not met with another accident. Oh, no, indeed. Oh, don't say that, Aunt dear. Perhaps they have suffered some slight delay. <laughs> slight delay? It is nearly one o'clock in the morning. Oh, goodness, I had not realised it was so late. Had you, Mr Trundle? No, indeed. Perhaps they have been waylaid and robbed. Oh, oh no, Aunt Rachel. Rachel. Perhaps we had better send the servants out with lanterns. Oh, Which way will they send. come? I wonder if... Oh, they'll come from Muggleton, of course. Oh. Ring the bell for Joe and we shall... Oh, shh. <gasps> what was that? A strange sound. Oh, whatever is the matter? It's coming from the kitchen. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Um, it's coming nearer. Oh, what oh, oh, what's all this? Oh, oh, I, is anything the matter? Why, brother? Nothing the matter. We. Well. All right. I say, well, well, all right. I should think so. Oh. Uh, my, my dear, here's my friend. Come, Bonneville. Yourself, ladies. No, oh, goodness. Is something the matter with Mr. Snodgrass? <laughs> Nothing the matter, ma'am. Cricket dinner. Glorious party. Capital songs. Old port. Claret. Very good. Wine, ma'am. Wine. No, it wasn't. It wasn't the wine. It was the salmon. Strange how it never is the wine in these cases, eh? eh? They all better go to bed, are they? Had indeed. Two of the boys will carry the gentlemen upstairs. I, I won't go to bed. No, boy. Carry me. No. Where Let's have another bottle. Of oh. Oh. He's fallen over. Oh. Brother, now come along. Everyone is going to bed. I'll leave the lot of you. Mr. Tupman will assist you. Yes, indeed, oh, I will. Yes, indeed. 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 Yes, indeed.